you know, I one of the best riffs we ever had on this podcast was you coming up with the theory that a guy's dick is like his poker hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It really is genius. Like, that would be a good stand-up bit. But it, it has always haunted me that you assigned me the seven-deuce offsuit. That's not fair, because it's, I know other people, including people that we have seen naked together, who I would say are closer to that. Sure, sure. That I'll was give when, you a 6-5 offsuit. A little bit of playability. It's connected. Where's Josh? I need Josh to give me a breakdown of whether or not these hands are insulting or not. You're probably not going to like that one too much either. But uh, come on, dude, give me like, uh, give me a full house. Can, how much can you tell me on camera about your breakup? Well, my girlfriend, she, my ex girlfriend, she did a podcast where she talked a little bit about the breakup. Okay. I have not seen this. Um, we've talked a bit of off camera about it, but yeah. I'm just wondering, like, what you, how you would put it for our Sledge Lords fans out there who maybe don't trickle down to the Danny Mullen podcast where I'm sure you've talked about it more. No, I haven't talked about it really at all. Oh, okay. I, basically, her and I were together for a long time and we moved in together and we our schedules were home a lot. And so we were just around each other pretty much constantly for uh -huh. about a year. And that's when we started to have some problems in our relationship that I think came from over familiarity mm. and too much time spent together where the result is the person becomes less special and then you start to value them a little bit less. You were together the whole pandemic? Yeah, we were together for like f coming up on it would be like four years is when we started seeing each other this June or July. Do you think that the pandemic like made you spend so much more time together that it was kind of... That increased the intensity of the relationship a bit or what? No, I, I think when the pandemic was raging, as long as we lived apart, which we did the majority of the pandemic, oh, it okay. wasn't necessarily okay. a problem. It's we moved in together uh, out of necessity because she had to move. Her roommate found the new roommate. Mm -hmm. So she moved in with me. And there came a point where I think I had lost perspective on the relationship just because we were so on top of each other and i don't know if, if she would admit this but to some extent i think she did too i think she was probably becoming a little bit disillusioned with me right. and i um i'm trying to think of like how much B basically one of us broke it off and then we kind of reconciled and then right. the other person broke it off so it ended up actually being like, because usually when a guy, when people ask him like, hey, so who broke up with who? He was like, it's mutual. Yeah. It was mutual. <laughs> like you got fucking dumped and she's probably right. banging a guy with a 10 inch cock now. But it's like one person breaks up, then you get back together. Then the other person breaks up. It's like, it's not mutual, but it feels even. Yes. And because it's so even like her and I still text and still have a friendly relationship. Okay. So there wasn't a loser in the scenario. Nobody was heartbroken, um, threatening to leak nudes to the other person. Nobody was showing up blacked out drunk at 4 a.m. banging on windows. Honestly, in this day and age where it's so common for people to break up and then immediately like expose each other or whatever, that is kind of heartening to be like, okay, they were able to break up and have it not turn into a big, messy, disgusting thing. Because to, to be fair, I think... One of the first Danny Mullen videos that I ever watched, it was years ago, I was on Twitch. Somebody said, you should interview Danny Mullen. I, on my Twitch stream, when I'm playing poker, I'll have like 100 people, 200 people watching. So I get to actually like engage with them a bit more. I say, Danny Mullen, okay, I'll search him. I watched some videos. I think I go to like look at the most viewed ones. At the time, one of the most viewed ones, or maybe one that you had just dropped recently, was, I believe it was, I gave my girlfriend a piece of shit for Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. Or for her birthday. It was her birthday, come okay. on. I'm not a complete heartless fool. And I just remember being like pretty fascinated by that dyna that dynamic of you having this like cute, seemingly kind of like innocent girlfriend who's like in fucking college or whatever. And then here you are, this depraved YouTuber giving her a turd. Yeah. And I was that 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 certainly like endeared me to like what was going on here a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. It was there were elements of the relationship that were a content relationship, you could say. But I'm so grateful that it didn't turn into a slam fest afterwards. That is low. I mean, it's one thing. I don't like the YouTube drama where YouTubers have some sort of falling out and then start exposing each other. Mm. I think that's completely slimy. Like, imagine ever, like, after you see that this new guy you meet who seems cool, he seems funny, oh, maybe I'm going to do something business-wise with this guy, but then you look at his YouTube page and he's got a history of exposing people. You're like, uh, uh, I'm going to step on the brakes here. I don't think yeah. I want to. Imagine seeing a girl who had a public blowout with an ex. Like, you're not going to want to date her. Or if you're a guy 
who starts trash talking your ex girlfriend, other chicks are going to be less likely to hop into the sack with you. If I was single and I was even considering spending a time time with a chick who was like that, like who was had like a real like, oh, you got a YouTube video, you're exposed into it. Hey, I don't even want to like be around you unless no. it's fucking recorded. Like, exactly. Nanny cam. Like we're not going in the bedroom. Like we're staying right here in this fucking living room because I don't trust you, bitch. Absolutely not. No. It's turning personal and they're probably saving texts and maybe secretly recording you. Yeah. And it, you kind of like, like that's a terrible feeling. A great feeling is being in a relationship and feeling like you can just say whatever the fuck is really on your mind. Yeah. A terrible feeling is feeling like no matter how close you get, Every text you send, you're still thinking, like, how would this look on TMZ? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know? That's how you know the relationship isn't a very strong relationship. I'm not yeah. there at all. Like, I've definitely, I'm just, like, totally open with my girl, I think. But definitely, like, when I think about being in a relationship or thinking what, what it would be like dating somebody else, it is kind of like, oh, fuck. Like, how the hell would you figure out who you could trust? Mm -hmm. Dude, it's, it, it's a completely different game for me because when I got into a relationship. You were very early on. Early on, yeah. no money, no status. And then when you start breaking up, you think that the world of being single is going to be something out of the show Entourage. <laughs> I'm going to be walking down Melrose Place, two yoga clad, yoga pant clad honeys on each arm, Ooh, I love it. taking them shopping at Gucci, at Chanel, hopping in the Porsche, tooling up to my house in the hills. Tooling, I love tooling. Tooling up, at, but then I realize that I don't have a Porsche. I don't have two girls in either arm. I am a tool, and that all these sexual fantasies or this happiness you concoct in your head uh, is just that, a creation of your mind. And then the loneliness comes back in, and then you start second-guessing the breakup in the first place. Mm. It's got to be hard to stay 100% on point with that because it's like, okay, a ton of relationships follow this formula where there's a degree of horniness on the guy's part. Maybe he doesn't feel like he's being fully you know getting what he wants in that regard you know it's like there's, he wants to explore new things in one way or another and then you break up and it's like at least for a moment there there's like a lull where you have like no affection in yeah. your life and that and this like opens up this like space for you to be sort of uh lonely and stuff and i've definitely been there like okay but i also have this memory of I had a I had a bad breakup in like 2011 maybe where I was like I was only with the girl for like four or five months but I was pretty pretty bummed afterwards and I remember Hot going chick. yeah and she was just like it was my first girlfriend after moving to Southern California and she was super tapped in she knew what to do she knew what parties to go to she knew what, she, she had a lot going on and all of a sudden I'm kicking it with her we're doing a lot of cool shit and I'm like yeah. I'm I'm very very new to southern california so i don't know shit to do i'm like a bmx dude i know to go to the same fucking three bars over and over that's about it you know so it's like you know a pretty kick-ass six there if she's trying to film a trick <laughs> exactly and then like after you know it was weird because that was kind of part of it was that it's like oh like i temporarily had like a more thriving social life and yes i kind of like couldn't help but sort of view her through that lens of yes. all these cool people i'm meeting and like just kind of knowing what to do or whatever and then we break up and it's like where was I going with this? You were talking about the how what, it was a heartbreaking breakup. Oh, oh, this is what it was. Because yeah. then after that, I would be going out drinking and shit. And then I would start having a conversation with girls that I'm meeting. And at some point in my drunk fucking mind, I'd start letting on the fact that I was a little bummed about this breakup that I had been through, et cetera. And I feel like invariably like the girls would like sort of look at me like I was damaged goods because I had just came out of this relationship and clearly wasn't over it. Hmm. I don't know if that sounds familiar at all, but for me, one of the, the best pussy getting streaks I ever had in my life was after I got broken up with by my second girlfriend. Hmm. So I had the opposite experience. It was the most depressed and angry I was, but for some reason that was just working. Mm. I would get blacked out in the corner of the bar and just look sad over a Heineken bottle. Right. And I was getting laid out of it. Yeah, because that girl that I'm talking about, like pretty soon after that I did end up banging some of her friends, and it was definitely like the kind of thing where she was just such a bitch that like, her friends wanted to fuck her ex-boyfriend to like, sort of assert that they Ooh. were kind of on the same level as her because she clearly had like the higher status but then her friends were like 
kind of being like subjugated by her and so like for them to then be able to fuck her ex-boyfriend that to them felt like pretty cool i think that's probably a good sign that you shouldn't have been with that girl long term yeah if her friends were chomping at the bit to backstab her i don't think i've seen the devil wears prada but when i saw michael scott on the office sort of becoming briefly enamored with her i feel like i felt like that was probably pretty similar to this girl's personality type i haven't seen that particular episode of the office (laughs) this has been a clip from my new podcast sledge lords with danny mullen we're dropping a new episode every week so either hit the link in the description or search up the adam 22 channel on youtube appreciate you guys